shocking new details today as the man accused of kidnapping and sexually assaulting a woman at a gas station in Mapleton refused to show up in court this morning. Hi everyone and thanks for joining us this afternoon. I'm Christine Stanwood. A Cass County Sheriff deputy tells us they will try again to get Abdul Rahman Ali out of his jail cell, cell and in front of the judge. If Ali refuses, they may use probable cause and set bail. Ali is facing five felony counts, including sexual assault, kidnapping, aggravated assault, and two counts of terrorizing. According to court documents, Ali forced a woman working at Gordy's Travel Plaza into the woman's bathroom and raped her. Sheriff's deputies tried to get into the room and say they heard Ali say, she is my wife. Officers kicked in the door and found Ali completely naked and the victim injured and in tears. Documents say the victim was unsure if Ali was speaking English or a different language. But when they were in the, in the bathroom alone, she heard him utter Allah Akbar, which in Arabic means God is the greatest. We will have much more on this developing story tonight on Valley News Live. And we are learning more about the motive behind the mass shooting in San Bernardino, California, that left 14 people dead and more than 20 wounded. Reports indicate that the wife of the couple who carried the attacks pledged allegiance to ISIS on a Facebook post prior to the attack. Jay Gray has the latest in California. A stunning discovery in the case this morning. NBC News has learned Tashfeen Malik pledged allegiance to the leader of ISIS in a Facebook post just before she and her husband, Saeed Farouk, allegedly killed 14 and wounded more than 20 during an attack at the Inland Regional Center Wednesday. This took days, weeks, if not months to plan out. There's nothing impulsive about this shooting at all. Investigators continue to pour over evidence pulled from the couple's Redlands home, where, according to federal officials, there's evidence that Farouk had been, quote, talking with people in the U.S. and overseas during the past year who showed an interest in radical jihad. But NBC News has learned the couple tried to cover their digital footprint, destroying computer hard drives and cell phones prior to carrying out the mass shooting. And as investigators try to understand why, so does Farouk's family. His brother-in-law sat down overnight with NBC's Lester Holt. Did somebody brainwash him? Something snap him? And why would the couple choose to carry out this attack and leave behind their six-month-old daughter? Questions and grief that still fill this tight-knit community. Police are looking for two teenage girls missing since late last month. 16-year-old Angie White Lightning and 13-year-old Destiny Norquay were both last seen on November 28th. Both girls have brown hair and brown eyes. Contact police if you have any information. Now let's check in with meteorologist Lisa Green on the forecast. Lisa, how's it looking? Well, it looks beautiful outside. You step out the door, you're starting to see, notice that it's not as chilly as it was this morning. Temperatures are making their way into the 20s and 30s. And, of course, the area that was... Super toasty yesterday compared to the rest of us is at 46 degrees right now in Langdon. They may beat yesterday's high of 50 if we keep along those lines. It's 43 degrees in Devil's Lake as well, 31 in Fargo, and 26 in Grand Forks. So we are warming up uh, where we, of course, have that snowpack. It's a little bit colder. You can see the snowpack on our visible satellite loop here. It's that white over the valley that is not moving throughout the loop. That's the snowpack, and that covers basically Grand Forks down through southeastern North Dakota and parts of Minnesota as well. Wind is picking up out there today with 25 mile per hour gusts out of the south in Fargo, 22 steady speed in Grand Forks. And as we look at our tower, Kim, you can see it jostling just a little bit with more warmth on the way for this afternoon. Temperatures back into the mid to even some upper 30s possible in the Southern Valley. And we've got a mild night ahead of us tonight, and that's going to set the stage for a fantastic weekend. I'll have your forecast coming up in just a few minutes. Thanks, Lisa. Well, the high-profile death of a Wapaton College student will get national attention Sunday night. Producers for 60 Minutes tell Valley News Live they'll profile the Andrew Sadek case in a story that looks at the world of drug informants. Sadek was an informant at a drug task force when he died. His body was found in the Red River with a bullet wound to the head and wearing a backpack full of rocks. Leslie Stahl will head up the reports on law enforcement's controversial use of young confidential informers in the war on drugs. If Andrew had told you that he was thinking of becoming a confidential informant, what do you think your reaction would have been? Oh, 
Well, he'd have gotten him a lawyer and told him no. We've never heard of such a thing, you know, yeah. using college students for snitches or whatever you want to call them, stool pigeons, or I don't know, what do you call them, you know. The two-part episode will air exclusively Sunday on KX4 in the Fargo-Moorhead market. An East Grand Forks man has been charged with felony, domestic assault by strangulation and two counts of theft. Following a dispute with his live-in girlfriend, 54-year-old Thomas Whipple allegedly choked his girlfriend after a day-long argument. According to court documents, his girlfriend told police that Whipple flipped out after she confronted him about taking her prescription painkillers. Well, it's Friday. Time to take a look at this week's Valley's Most Wanted. And there are two this week. Police say Elliot Dragu is wanted for criminal conspiracy. Police are also looking for Walter Washke for criminal conspiracy. Contact your local law enforcement if you have any information on Dragu or Washke. The president of Planned Parenthood was met by peaceful protesters who said they were there to celebrate life. Their main gripe with Planned Parenthood is that it performs abortions. Cecile Richards was in Fargo last night to help with fundraiser efforts for Planned Parenthood of North Dakota. Richards says she wishes people understood abortions make up a small percentage of the health care services the group provide. We do more than any organization in the country every single day to provide birth control and education to prevent unintended pregnancy and the need for abortion. Richards is heading next to Colorado Springs Planned Parenthood, where they are still dealing with the aftermath of a shooting last week that killed three people. Well, Bison fans remember the name and the moves, and now Green Bay fans are getting a feel for Johnny Crockett. Keep your eyes on number 38. Crockett got in the game against Detroit last night in the third quarter. At one point, he was the team's leading rusher, finishing with 22 yards on five carries. He led all running backs in yards, only trailing Aaron Rodgers for yards gained on the ground. And remember, Valley News Live is your bison station. Join us on Saturday at 1.30 on KVLY for our Farmers Union Insurance Bison Football pregame show. It will get you all this all set for the 2.30 kickoff. The Bison in Montana playing on ESPN3 this week.